Good day, poker peeps. This is Sky with Smart Poker Study. And in today's video, we're going to be hand reading a tight aggressive big blind caller's range. On the screen in front of you, we have everything we need for hand reading. Hand that went to showdown, Flopzilla Pro, the best hand reading software, our two steps to hand reading, and poker's ultimate question, what are they doing this with? This is the question that's going to help you make great reads and exploits against your opponents. To help you use this question to the utmost, I have a free PDF called Poker Training, The Ultimate Question. You can get it through the link in the description down below. Page one gives you the question along with all the bits of information that you need to answer it properly. And then starting on page two, some examples right here for you. All right, let's get to the hand reading exercise. We have Queen Jack suited in the small blind right here. Fishy player, 86 and 0, limps in folds. Of course, I want this fish all to myself, so I ISO raise right here. Um, and then something kind of surprising happens. This is a 2020 tight aggressive player. I could expect a three bet, which I'd be willing to fold to, uh, depending on the size of the three bet here. But he does something a little unexpected. He decides to call. Here's the thing. When we ask ourselves, what are they doing this with? This isn't a fishy player like this making the call up here, right? This is what looks like a tight, aggressive, thinking player. He's only raised first in, no calls so far. He folds to steals. This guy seems to know what he's doing. So when he calls with a player yet to act, this tells me he is willing to go multi-way to the flop because he can expect the fish to call as well. His call just sweetened the pot for the fish to continue, right? So he can expect a multi-way pot on the flop. So he has to have a hand that he's just willing to go multi-way with. But I think it is a pretty darn tight range. So let's first start by assigning him a 10% call two bidding range. Um, let's start looking at the out of or off suit hands. Ace 10, king queen off. I'm good with these. I think he can three bet all of these ones up here. Absolutely. Because he has position against us as well. I think he's three betting. But I think jacks are three betting as well. Tens might be on the cusp. Maybe sometimes he three bets, sometimes he calls, but I think tens and below are all possible calling hands. Um, ace, queen, ace, check. I would add these to his calling range. And then now, because he's expecting a multi-way pot, he'd probably be choosing hands that work well multi-way. The suited hands, the big card hands, those all work, obviously, off-suit, even big cards. But some of these suited connectors, I would go as far down as seven, six suited. So I'm thinking... This is the range that, that I feel pretty comfortable assigning our main villain in the hand. Now, against his range, actually, let's see what happens first. Okay, he does end up calling. We're going multi-way. 12 big blind pot on the flop with three of us. We're out of position with the queen jack suited. Speaking of the queen jack suited, against this range, we are... We have 46% equity. Not too bad. It is a bummer that we're out of position and it is multi-way, but at least we have a fish in the hot in the hand with us right now. So let's see what happens on the flop. Woo, loving that actually. Top pair, decent kicker, and then a, what is it? Seven and a three. Top pair, decent kicker, plus a flush draw. Our equity jumps up to 82% against the caller, the first caller's range. We're loving this right now. So what do we do? We end up making a C-bet, right? Betting for value going slightly over half pot. At this size, I'm sure both of them can call with a really wide range. And I'm thinking Hero here, when he makes this bet, he's probably really trying to get value. I mean, maybe out of both, but really trying to extract value out of the fishiest player. We can imagine this player has plenty of queens in his limp calling range. Queen 10, queen 9, queen 8 suited for sure. He has plenty of 7s. A7, King7 seven suited, uh, 7, 8, 7, 9, 7, 10 suited. Lots of stuff that can give us value. We do block them from having some flush draws, but they're suited aces, suited king, suited 10, suited nines in their range as well, like 9, 8 of diamonds they could both have. Not both of them, I'm sorry. Uh, he could have the 9, 8 of diamonds. Yeah, actually, my bad. He can have it too, limp calling the 9, 8 of diamonds. So this is great. We're getting value out of so many hands. Villain 23 ends up calling. Ooh. Our fish folds. What a shame. But hey, we have one player on the line with a really good hand, high, high equity against his range right here. But we have to ask ourselves, what are they doing this with? What are they calling us with in position on the queen high board? So let's clear all the filters. I'll hit tab so we see percentages over here. 
I think he can call with sets. I don't think he has to wake up with crazy aggression right now and raise us. My guess is he might have made this initial call, hoping that he can continue in the pot, extracting more value out of him too by slow playing a big hand. So I think sets are in that uh, calling range right here. Uh, he doesn't have any two pair, no over pairs. Top pairs, for sure. Why would they fold right now, right? Pocket pair less than? Yeah, he could put us easily on ace king, on ace five suited, right? There's so many things that we missed on this board. He can call with his under pairs and he can call just to see what we do on the turn. Mid pairs, I think those can call one street as well for his positional advantage. Pocket pair less than second card, sixes, fives, and fours. Um, I'm thinking those are not calling. You know, actually, come to think of it, I he might not call with one fishy player still to act on a semi-wet board. He really might not call with just the eight, seven, and seven, six. I'm going to remove those from his range. Just because he's a tighter player in general, one player left to act, these kinds of players, this is kind of like me. I really restrict my calling ranges when I have one or multiple players still to act because I don't want them to come over the top. And I just really hate seeing multiple streets out of position. My guess is he probably feels the same. So we're going to go pocket pair, less than top card, those tens, nines, and eights, and above. And definitely flush draws are calling right here. Even the weaker 9-8 suited, they also have a backdoor straight draw. So yeah, those are calling as well. Um, yeah, so I'm happy to put him on this 40% calling range right here. Now, when we turn that on, our equity drops down to 67%. So we go from 82 to 67, a 15% equity drop right here. And uh, this is interesting. We actually, by, by making our C-bet and him calling, we narrowed his range. We removed 60% of his pre-flop range. And this comes to the first lesson learned. This isn't a mistake, it's just a lesson learned, right? When a large portion of their range folds, their equity increases, right? Our equity went down by 15% right there. Um, uh, and so his equity jumped up by 15%. Let's imagine he actually had a few weaker hands in his range. Let's turn this off. We go from 82%. What if he's a little bit more fishy player and he can call with all these additional pairs right here? Maybe even pocket pair less than the board just to see what we do. Deuces. If that is his range, we're only removing 35%. Our equity only dropped 5% right here, you know? So the more you can remove from their range, um, the stronger their overall range is against you. It's just something, it should be obvious, right? But if you've never actually thought about it, never paid attention to how the equities change and why they change, it's a good little lesson to learn. All right, so let's get to the turn action. And this is where things get pretty exciting. Uh, villain 24 folds, nine of spades hit. So our equity is 67%, nine of spades, drops our equity 14% to just 53. In turn, that increases villain's equity up that same percentage, right? So things are just not looking good for us on this nine of spades, but what does hero do? Hero increases his bet to 80%, 80% pot. Now this really feels like he's trying to end the hand right now, but he has a great value hand and a value earning opportunity. By betting so big, you end up naturally narrowing his range big time possibly to only hands that are ahead of you right now. You're getting everything worse to fold with such a big bet. And that leads to another lesson learned right here. Know why you're betting value or bluff. Like what are you trying to achieve right now? Like I said, this bet feels like he's just trying to end the hand, top pair, good kicker, flush draw. Why try to end it now? Why not bet try to extract value, get some of these weaker hands that called on the first street, get them to call again, right? Why limit his range to only the strongest hands? This is actually a pretty decent opportunity just to check, see what he does. Maybe if he bets half pot, you just check call, string him along. All of his bluffs or all of his weaker hands than your top pair could bet when you check. Now you're turning your value betting opportunity into a value check calling. You're letting him string himself up with a with a check call right here. So let's see what happens. 
oh, he ends up calling. So we have to ask ourselves, right, narrowing that range, what are they doing this with? Let's go over here on the nine of spades. We bet so big, 80%. We've already classified him as a tight, aggressive player. He's probably folding out anything that does not connect with this board and maybe some of his weakest connections he's folding out as well. Um, I think all of his sets, sure, those can all stay in right now. And I guess the reason why is because there's no need to really push the action. There's no need to min raise right now. We bet so big, he's got a strong hand. He could just slow play us. The pot's going to be, or the pot is 66 big blinds after he calls. We only have 76 behind. He can easily get it all in. We're going to shove the river. We're going to check. He bets. We shove. Uh, he checks. Uh, or We check. He bets big and we call all in. I mean, there's so many ways for him to win a ton of chips from us right now. So sets are in. I think his top pairs can call as well. But let's take a look. Let's hover over. I think some of these versus an 80% pot bet, pot barrel as well. We bet on the flop too. I think he can fold some of these weaker ones. I think queen 10 and queen jack. Maybe the overcard kickers can call both of the kings and the aces over here. Let's keep those ones in his top pair calling range. So sets, top pair, pocket pair less than top card, tens. I think those are folding now. It made sense that they could call on the flop. But after we barrel so big, I really think he's narrowing his range by even those right there. Now, let's see here. What about, f so if he's not calling those, he's folding his mid pairs. What about his flush draws? 9-8 um, has pair plus flush draw. 10-9 pair plus flush draw. Ace-10, king-10. King-10 has a gut shot plus a flush draw. Ace-10 is the nut flush draw. Let's say he can call with all those draws. It does feel a little bit wide to me, but they all make sense, right? Ace 10 nut flush, king 10 gut shot flush draw, 10 nine pair, nine eight pair plus flush draw. So I think he can call with that. So let's narrow the range. We go from 53% to, holy stromboli, 32%. We narrowed his range so much to only the strongest hands, and we're only ahead of a couple of draws here plus pairs, right? The king 10 we're ahead of, and the nine eight. Like, really, we're not ahead of much at all. We narrowed his range so much, we're kind of value-owning ourselves in this spot. So let's see what happens on the river. King of spades comes. Doesn't complete our flesh draw. What a shame. Doesn't give us two pair. Double shame. <laughs> all right, and our equity dropped to 11%. This is so ugly. What a terrible turn in river for us right here. Everything went awry in this hand. So what happens? We end up checking. Hero ends up betting. Now, this is this is pretty interesting. Um, we have 11% equity with his full turn range seeing that river. Mathematically, to call, we need 14%. If we call here, and let me tell you, we do call. Uh, if we call here, we're mathematically making a bad call, a l mathematically losing call, I guess we could say. But let's imagine he's making... So this is... If he's betting with 100% of his range, it's a losing call. But let's actually see what could he be betting with here. Let's narrow his betting range because some stuff is checking behind. Sets, absolutely betting, hoping that we check shove or just check call and give us value, give him value. Two pair hands, sure, why not? They suddenly backdoored into a two pair. Uh, they're going to love it on this board. They're betting for value, especially given that we checked and showed a ton of weakness. Top pair? King 10, yeah, they suddenly hit a top pair hand. We could have had queen jack, queen 10 the whole way. Ace, queen even. King, queen, or king, ace just now beat us. So let's, uh, oh, he doesn't have ace, king. But any top pair hand that suddenly hit a king could be making this bet. Mid pairs. Now, here's an interesting thing. He's a tight, aggressive player. Suddenly an overcard came to his flopped top pair with his ace, queen. I think he's checking behind quite often with a second pair hand. I don't see a reason to bet right here. Check behind, hope that your hand wins at showdown after two big flop and turn bets went in. So if he's checking behind mid pairs, he's checking behind weak pairs. He's checking behind ace. He might bluff an ace high. He'll probably, he could possibly check behind weak pairs, but bluff ace high, which is only one hand. So literally, this is what he's betting, this tiny one-fifth-ish pot bet. 63% of his range. If we narrow him to this, we actually only have 6% equity. There's only one hand in his betting range that we're beating. We call, and 
he had the pocket nines for a turned set right here. So, wow, this was a, a, a huge mistake, I think, on the turn, that large bet size. And then calling this when, in fact, we're only beating one combo, another mistake as well. Now, here's your action step for the video. Find an ISO raising hand where you barrel the flop and turn and do a hand reading exercise right now. So you're isolating or you're hand reading an ISO raiser's calling range. Lastly, don't forget about the free PDF, Poker Training, The Ultimate Question, link in the description. And if you want to turn yourself into a master hand reader, get the online poker hand reading workbook. Hand reading is poker's number one skill. You need this workbook to turn yourself into the player that you want to be. Link in the description down below. 95 pages, 38 hand reading walkthroughs and exercises, along with 15 video demonstrations and quizzes and a 17 page answer key to check your work. Before you watch another video, please subscribe to my channel. And until next time, take action both on and off the felt to become the player that you want to be.